I'm Bradley Vincent, curator at Hodder Gallery on the Gold Coast. Hodder Gallery is thrilled to be supporting local artists to make new work. Next year, we'll be putting 20 local artists and artist collectives on display on the largest stage that's ever been available in the city. When we called for submissions, we asked for artists to submit a proposal of their choosing. What has emerged in the 20 selected artists is a real connection to place. There is, amongst them, a rich interest in nature and the environment. Also, a reflection on development and our human impact on the environment and what we extract from it. And, optimistically, a look at the individual in relation to nature and how we might find space for reflection in the world around us. In this podcast series, members of the Hodder Youth Advisory Group will sit down for a one-on-one with these artists to talk about their practice, their background and the work they're making for Hodder in 2021. Okay. I'm joined here today at TAFE Queensland with Abby McCulloch and Ella Fitzgerald. Abby's going to be exhibiting with us at Hotter Gallery next year and Ella's on our youth advisory group at the gallery. So welcome. So I thought I'd just kickstart um, as we're new to one another. We might talk a little bit about um, our art practice and what we do or what materials we use in our practice so that we can introduce ourselves to each other that way. Abby, I'll start with you. What materials? Yeah, I use? yeah. Um, Typically, I'm... what do you use or what do you play with in your studio space? Oh, okay. Well, so um, predominantly I'm a painter, I guess. So I use mostly oil paints and... Recently, I've just sort of started dabbling in clay and ceramic and, and yeah. What about you, Ella? I'm a film photographer and my background's in fine art, um, but my medium is more in photography and video. So when you say film photographer, do you mean old school, like 35 millimetre? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that's... That's sort of how I was introduced to photography as well in high school and I did double in digital photography in uni. So how long would you take, like if you're doing um, one of your larger paintings, like, I don't know, how long might you spend on that? Um, It depends. This sort of weird thing has been happening lately where um, I'm discovering that because something happens sort of easily or quickly... Um, that isn't so bad because I spent, I think I've spent like over maybe 20 years making art and questioning that whenever anything sort of came about quickly, I'd be like, oh, oh. that's terrible. I've got to keep going. And I just overwork everything. And so sort of lately I've had the time like everyone has right now to, um, to sort of, yeah, just, just try to change that, that questioning and, mm. and try to sort of, yeah, produce work quickly. So I think lately I've been making paintings um, and and even the sculptures as well, Um, yeah, quite quickly. Mm. So I would say on average maybe a month. Is that quick? No. A month to make a painting? That's not quick. Uh, See, I'm used to that being quite quick maybe. It's quick for me. uh, (laughs) I don't know. I think, yeah, people are, you know, we are kind of hard on ourselves and, if something comes freely or quickly or organically, you do go, oh, I yeah, that was too easy. Yeah, that came too freely mm. to me, and then you question it. But yeah. maybe that's just because in that moment mm. it was right and happened that way. You will often, for me, it's in the execution. So I'll just maybe sketch it out with a bit of charcoal, and then it takes a month to fill that in. But mm. the essence is there. Yeah. But sometimes that can be ten minutes, and you just stand back and you go, "Yep, okay, I know where you're. I know where you're going to take me now." Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's, um, yeah, but you do you do question it. The whole thing's questioning. <laughs> I mean, is, the whole it? process. You yeah. just get better at it, you know. <laughs> As you get older, I think you, you start to kind of get to know yourself a bit. Mm. And I say a bit. And trusting your instincts on what direction you're heading. Yeah. Yeah. And then at the same time, you're just trusting the fact that you'll never be able to trust that, you know. <laughs> so then you just get good at, at failing, I think, really. Mm. So I brought you two together because um, (laughs) the female form, it's like strong and present in both your practices, but there's never um, a man there uh, that I could tell or typically know. And I just thought I'd put the question out there as to why that may be or um, why you lean that way or 
Um, if you could talk on that a little. Yeah. Um, well, personally, I make work that I guess is from my perspective. And the last time I looked, I didn't have a penis. So <laughs> I guess I can only relate to themes that, um, yeah, mm. respond to being a female or a woman today. And we can all relate to women. We were all born from a woman. Yes. So I guess the the work for me is universal. It just happens to have come from a woman. Mm. Yeah, I feel like the obvious answer is I'm a woman myself, so I feel like mm. I can understand other women's issues and other women's experiences and thoughts more deeply than I can um, with a male. And I feel like I m want my work to be relevant to everyone but especially women because as you mm. said Abby it's from my perspective and my own experiences and that's because mm. I am a woman that's yeah really evident in a lot of my work and, and really I think our stories are, are sort of vastly underrepresented you know mm. I mean given the, the sort of um historical contribution of women to the to the sort of art canon I guess we're not really there so it's it's kind of time to make up some of that slack so mm. yeah and I, I don't think find us boring do you no, find us boring no I think there's a lot to mine and a lot to say so mm. I think we've only just started really photography as I do I think there's a special moment in that and a lot of empowerment in that from a woman woman really taking back the female gaze, you could say, and capturing another woman. Um, yeah, there's just something really special mm. in that moment. Something happens and you really understand each other on a deeper level, I find, yeah. And it's funny, you know, the, the sort of use of the, the human form and particularly the female human form is, is sort of, I guess, probably the most predictable subject matter you could use as a, as a creative. And yet I still feel like there's something new to say, particularly mm. now, about sort of vulnerability and self-love and, and sort of self-understanding, you know. So I kind of feel mm. like for me, I'm still making work that I haven't seen yet, which probably sounds a little bit naive, but it's just, yeah, I think you feel like you've got to keep mm. plugging this thing that ordinarily could be quite predictable, but it's, but it must feel fresh. Otherwise you wouldn't be doing it. Yeah. I want to create work that mm. I feel represented in yeah. or I can relate to. And yeah. I never saw that in my own medium of photography growing up yeah. and everything that I was shown I just didn't see that and especially being um, someone from a different ethnic background being a woman of color as well I wanted to be more represented and I also wanted my body type to be represented mm. and shown being a curvy woman um, I just couldn't see myself and that's where that sort of my work has spurred from as well and also seeing women in a way that wasn't just sexualized or objectified mm -hmm. sort of taking back that power yep. for ourselves and creating work of us that we want to see yeah that we can just be yes yeah. we can exist without being seen with a male gaze mm -hmm. we can create our own gaze for women not for the gaze of men yeah and to just accept um and sort of yeah to accept and love who we are is sort of a bit of a radical act really yeah can you uh, both tell me a bit about what you're working on now or working towards? I'm working on a show at Hotter next year. That's exciting. <laughs> Very exciting. Um, yep. Will it be 3D, 2D, like a combination? It's going to um, be both. It's going to be paintings and sculpture. Um, and so far it's looking like something I've never done before. <gasps> Really? Yeah, it's really, really different. Wow. It's exciting. Yeah. So I saw on your Insta, Abby, um, a very brightly coloured head. Mm. Will you be, like, exploring some of these really um, bright, incredible colour palettes too? Perhaps, yeah. Oh. Sort of, I am. I'm pushing, pushing the material as far as I ever have and certainly pushing the content as far as I ever have. Yeah. So, 
yeah, this is a great opportunity. I mean, look at it, this gallery that's, that's you know, opening up for us all. I don't want to waste my opportunity at all. No. And it's so great to have a platform to create new work on that kind of grand scale too. Mm. I feel like that's really exciting and that they're going to open the gallery with a show of newly commissioned work by local artists. It's like a really beautiful statement for the gallery to make. Yeah, I'm really um, excited for that. Yeah. The fact that they really want to uplift and, and support and promote local artists is mm-hmm. a fantastic thing, especially on the Gold Coast. You know, we want to show people there's a huge mm. bustling creative community here. Mm-hmm.